What's going on guys, welcome back to another video. So in this one, I'm going to show you how to make money drop shipping in 2023 by avoiding failure. This video is for the beginner. This video is for the person who is just starting their drop shipping journey, or perhaps have been drop shipping for a few months now. Um, they've run some ads, tested some products, but ultimately they haven't seen the results they've been hoping for. Um, this video is not for the experienced drop shipper or the seasoned drop shipper that you could say, um, who's consistently making sales and making a bit of money when it comes to drop shipping. Before we jump into the presentation, and then I just want to kind of pre-note the information and say that dropshipping is probably 10 times harder than what you think it is. If you're new to this and you've been doing some research, watching some videos on YouTube, um, you're part of maybe some Facebook groups or following certain people on Twitter, you've seen screenshots, you've seen videos, and it can be quite easy to kind of build up that perception that dropshipping is easy and that everybody's making ten thousand dollars a hundred thousand dollars a million thousand dollars when it comes to dropshipping but the harsh reality is that that's just not the case so if you are struggling then just know that it's completely normal and all you have to do is continue your education and ultimately don't quit the only time you fail is when you choose to actually give up at this that being said then let's go back to the presentation and firstly i think it's important to take a look at what not to do and first of all, I think it's safe to say, I think it's like a fair assumption to make that over 90% of people fail at dropshipping. And when I say fail, I mean that they don't make a single penny. So if we can agree on this, so in that case, then I think it's safe to assume that if you do the same as the majority of the people, then ultimately you're gonna get the same results and you're going to fail as well. If most people fail at dropshipping and you're doing the same as most people, then you're gonna get the same results as most people. And I think it's a fair agreement for us to make that most people actually fail at this. So let's take a look at what everybody else is doing. So if you've been following the channel for a while, you'll know that um, a few times throughout the year, I'll do a weekly series where I take a look at subscribers, Shopify stores, and I'll review them. So in my time, I reckon I've probably built 20 or so Shopify stores myself. I probably reviewed somewhere between 50 and 100 stores. So I think it's safe to say like when it comes to spotting what an amateurish or a store that doesn't really set itself up for success, um, I can spot those pretty quick if I may say. So how do we analyze a Shopify dropshipping business? First then we need to understand that when it comes to every successful e-commerce business, there are three pillars. Well, there's actually four, but we can't see what suppliers brands are using. So the three pillars to every successful e-commerce business, whether it's on Shopify, whether it's on Amazon, wherever it may be, uh, for a business to be successful, they have to do these three things well. So what we're gonna do is take a look at what you should be avoiding underneath all three of these pillars, because because we're taking a look at things from a Shopify drop shipping standpoint of view, the first pillar is Shopify store or website. So no matter where you're selling your e-commerce product, the first pillar, the first thing you need to do well um, to be successful is have a good website. In this case, it's gonna be a Shopify store. The next thing, of course, is a product. You need to be selling a product which has a real kind of um, use case scenario for somebody, make somebody's life better, make somebody's life easier, helps improve their own kind of perception of themselves and makes them feel better about themselves themselves perhaps helps them with a certain pain they're having physical or mental whatever it may be basically you need a product that people want to buy you can't go around selling rubbish because nobody's going to buy it number three is marketing obviously you need a way of getting your product in front of people you can have the next best thing since sliced bread but if you don't know how to put it in front of people or to put it in front of your ideal audience then obviously nobody's going to buy it pillar number one is your shopify store i want to show you this website it's called trends.builtwith.com forward slash shop forward slash forward slash I should say um, Shopify dash theme um, you guys can go and check this out and I think you should because it's quite interesting reading or at least it is for a bit of a geek like me and um, basically what you're seeing here is a breakdown of what themes Shopify stores use in the United States they do do it by other countries as we can see in the right hand side here Australia Canada Brazil Germany etc with US being the biggest one by far. So as we can see, there's a massive leap between the US and pretty much any other country. So the US gives you the best kind of averages or the best mean data to take any kind of draw or any conclusion from. So if we come down here, we can see how many websites are using different themes. We can see the most popular one is the Dawn theme. So that's kind of like the replacement for the debut theme, Shopify's default and free template. We have Shopify custom theme, debut, Brooklyn craft, minimum, and then we have debutify down here. And this is kind of like the top one. 
seven or eight themes. So the conclusion we can kind of draw with this, this to take this with a pinch of salt, and I will kind of explain this more in a second, is that if you're using the same theme as everybody else, then there's a tiny argument there to be made that you are setting yourself up for failure because if most people are using these themes and most people are failing then you're kind of putting yourself in the same boat however i'm not saying that you must avoid these popular themes because there's a reason those themes are popular is because it is because they function well and they have great features what i am saying though is that you must 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 this is non-negotiable. If you want to be successful, you must differentiate yourself from the competition. And the reason for that is because your competition is going to be part of that 90% that we spoke about at the beginning. It's going to be part of that group of people who fail at this. So if you do not differentiate your store from those people, ultimately you are going to lead yourself down that same path which ends in failure. Another reason why you should differentiate yourself is because you don't want to blend in with the noise. You don't want to blend in with the crowd. If you're selling the same products, as everybody else. If you're using the same similar material and content and your store looks very similar in terms of its colors, its fonts, its imagery, and its wording, you're gonna blend in and from a consumer standpoint of view, you're gonna come across and pretty much look like the same company, the same business. And if they didn't buy from your competitor who looks very similar selling the same product, then why would they buy from you? Think about it, they're just not going to. So unless you differentiate yourself from the competition, you will not win that customer. So so the four main places I see where people fail to differentiate themselves are colors, fonts, imagery, and wording. I put an asterisk next to imagery because that is pretty much where 99.9% .9 of people all fall at this same hurdle. They all use the same stock imagery taken from suppliers. So colors, how do we differentiate yourself? If your business is using one of these colors, or not these exact colors, but there or thereabouts, then these are like the three most popular colors used on dropshipping stores. So if you're using one of these, then again, you're gonna be putting yourself in that same boat as other people, as the majority of people. And again, you don't want to be in that boat. You want to be in your own boat that doesn't sink at the end of the day. Fonts, again, these are the three most popular fonts across different Shopify stores. We have Poppins, we have Lato, and we have Open Sans. If you're using those similar colors and these similar fonts, it's gonna be very hard to distinguish yourself from everybody else. Then we have imagery. Um, it is time consuming, but at the end of the day, if you wanna be successful at this, you should be serious about this and spending the extra hour, maybe even two hours, to edit every photo of your product will pay dividends. So here's two great examples. On the left-hand side, this is what most people will do, is they will import the imagery across from their supplier. Um, if you've been on AliExpress for longer than two seconds, you'll notice that suppliers copy each other, they use the same content. So no matter where people are sourcing that product from, even if it's a different supplier to you, chances are it'll be the same images. So edit each image individually, take away the background, put a shadow on, put your logo on, whatever you've got to do just to differentiate it from that stock photo on AliExpress. So here's a very quick and easy example. If you're wondering how to remove backgrounds, you can get tools like Canva, so I can show you very quickly. Um, so just click the image, go to edit image. Canva is a tool that I've been paying for for God knows how long now, um, probably three or four years. Um, it's a tool that I'm not affiliated with in any single way, but hands down, no matter what business you're running, if you are online, you will have a use for Canva. So it's got some really great tools. So I'm just click on background remover. I think when I did it, it like skips off this bit here, but what you can do is you can click this erase. You can make your brush a bit bigger and then you basically just go ahead and edit it yourself. I'm not going to do it exact for the sake of this video. Just click done and then apply. And then to add the shadow, we can go to shadows. We can go to glow. We can go to apply. And then obviously just take your logo wherever it may be, upload it, apply it, done. It really is that simple, quick and easy. And depending on how many products you've got in your Shopify store, it may literally be a 10 or 20 minute task to do this for the images that you're using. Last but not least then for the Shopify store is wording. So, so many times I read people's product descriptions. This is where you have a chance to big up your products and bid up, big up your Shopify store as much as possible. And too many product descriptions are just 
boring and bland and sound like they've been written by a teenager doing their GCSEs. There is no excuse nowadays with the tools like chat GPT. So here's some great examples for that same product. Instead of just putting top quality sound that doesn't do anything, it doesn't paint any pictures, it doesn't make it exciting. So what I did was I went out to chat GPT and I said, rewrite top quality sound to make it sound more exciting. And these are the three examples it gave me. So unparalleled sonic clarity. It's exciting, it's sexy in comparison to top quality sound. Exemplar exemplary audio precision. Unmatched acoustic excellence. Three just more exciting and energizing statements and yet they all sell. They all say the same thing. Pillar two is the product then. Arguably the most important part to any business because you need something that you're going to sell otherwise you'll never make a single penny. Now, I could talk for two hours on product selection, probably longer in fact, I could definitely write a book on it. There's so many different pieces of criteria. I might have a checklist that's part of my program that has, I think like 30, if not 40 pieces of criteria that you can check against every product. But here are the top three points. So if you've been running a business up to this point and you haven't seen the results you hoped for, then check these three points against the products that you've been selling. And if you miss any of these points, then you know where your problem is. So number one is validation. What I mean by validation is that there's evidence that people want to buy your product. So if you found a product on Facebook or a competitor on Facebook, let's say, um, and you're seeing comments like this. So I have this and I love it too. Please ready to order now. How much is it? Where can I order? I just got mine minutes ago. Love it. How do I order these? Mine arrived today. Bought myself one of those and I loved it. Ordered two more as gifts. If you see comments like that on a Facebook ad about a particular product, there's no denying it. People want to buy it. Number two, Amazon. So not available, preferably try and find a product that isn't available with Amazon Prime. The majority of shoppers on Amazon are Prime members and they stick to products that are available via Prime. So if you find a product that's super easy to find on Amazon, they're undercutting you by 30% and they can get it delivered next day, it's going to be very difficult to compete with that. Now I'm not saying this is a 100% must because you still can succeed, especially if it's a new product. However, if you're selling quite a boring generic product that people don't really care about quality or materials, they just want the cheapest price and they want it tomorrow, they're gonna go looking on other platforms such as Amazon to find it. So a better takeaway from this point is try and find a product that isn't so easily, that isn't flooded on Amazon basically. Number three is country. So pick the right country to sell your products. Don't just assume USA or UK. It can be so easy when you start a business to think you're gonna sell to the USA because it's the biggest and most popular. However, if you checked out my video on Monday, you would have seen that USA is also the most competitive. So it's the most expensive and most difficult to succeed in my opinion, because that is where everybody goes. If you found a product that is validated and a product that isn't flooded on Amazon, however, there's just lots and lots of people drop shipping it to the US, why not go to the UK? Why not go to Australia or New Zealand? or Europe, another country where that product might not be saturated, might not be readily available. However, it still has the same appeal and still has that validation that people like the product and are buying it. Moving on to pillar number three, then the final pillar. If you're still watching with me, then I just want to take a quick second to say thank you. I really do appreciate the support. Um, I upload videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So if you're enjoying my content, then make sure you hit subscribe to see every video. So pillar number three, then marketing. Understanding the following two things will completely transform form your results. So I want to show you a statistic. So Facebook reveal, this is from careerarc.com. So you guys can go check it out and see um, the stats for yourself or well, do a bit of research. It's really, especially when it comes to marketing, you need to need to need to have some at least kind of basic knowledge of why consumers buy um, how they browse and the impact or things strategies you can put in your content in your actual creative to capture attention because that's what it's all about at the end of the day. The reason it's so important, especially on platforms like Facebook is because people aren't on Facebook to buy anything. When was the last time you went on Facebook to buy anything? Probably never, unless you're going on the marketplace, which is small fry in comparison to Google or Amazon. People are on there to socialize, to go through their newsfeed, kill time while they're on a lunch break, whatever it may be. So Facebook revealed that the average attention span on the platform for video content is about two seconds. Two seconds, so one, two, gone. That's all you have to capture the attention of the consumer. On a desktop computer, it's a bit longer, but on a mobile, it is 1.7 seconds. That's less, that's like one, gone. That's it. You have that tiny little bit of time to capture the person's attention. And the reason why this is so, so, so important is because if you have a very long, boring, 
drawn out creative and in that first two seconds the customer doesn't know everything about your business or everything about the product or you don't at least capture their intrigue to make them want to keep watching then you're going to lose you're going to fail it's just it really is that simple. So in less than two seconds, consumers have 38% of brand recall. Um, that's basically remembering the brand that was advertising, 23% of brand awareness, and 25% of purchase intent. So in less than two seconds, they have made their mind up basically quarter of the way or whether they're going to purchase that product or not. So those first two seconds of your ad creative are what you need to split test and are what can make the difference between success and failure. The second thing you need to understand is the best practices to improve your ad quality and performance. So this is mind blowing to me. Um, this article, which shows you basically what Facebook are looking for um, and what they kind of shone upon or what they hate um, in ads, which ultimately is going to inflict the results. Um, out of all the millions of advertisers on Facebook, only 7,000 people have seen this basically. Um, essentially, these are the attributes of low quality ad content. So if your Facebook ads are doing any of these things, it will impact, it will harm the results of your Facebook ads. The two or three biggest things or mistakes um, where I see people falling um, it's essentialized language, I completely butchered that, but you can read it. Um, so seven mind blowing uses of carrots. So instead of putting get free shipping today only, doesn't need to be like that. Facebook does not enjoy that use of language. Next is engagement bait. If you're asking people to like or comment or tag, that's gonna harm your results. Um, and the other thing as well is lack substantive or original content. If you are recycling content taken from wherever you found it online and not making your own content, that will harm your results. So not only is original content better for Facebook, but it's better for your audience too. So again, think of it like this. If you're using a really popular ad creation software or you're using content taken from a supplier and chopping it up and putting some cheesy music over the top, but essentially it's the same as what's already out there, what a lot of other people are using. When your audience is scrolling through their newsfeed, let's say they've seen that ad before for the same product and they have very similar content to yours and then they see your later on in the day or they see yours the day after they're just gonna kind of make that subconsciously in a split second thing I've already seen that not interested goodbye whereas if you've got an original piece of content and you take care and give those first two seconds the due diligence that they need then you have a very good chance of resetting their attention span they're making no connection whatsoever to the other company or other dropshipper they've seen the um, product ad for and then you have your chance then to put in front of them your creative for them to watch the rest of the video and sell them on the product and so with that being said then guys and that's it for today's video i really hope you enjoyed it i really hope there was some important information in there for you and you found it helpful if you did let me know what that helpful piece of content is um, any comments questions video suggestions whatever it may be anything i can do to help you out just post it down below i read every single comment so i will get back to you thanks again for watching guys i'll see you in the next video on friday cheers